everyone, and welcome to Take Two Radio Soaps and Review. I'm Pam, your sometimes host, <laughs> and I'm here with the gang. <laughs> Hello, gang. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello, world. <laughs> we have David, Anthony, Carolyn, and Candace. I think this is the first time I've done a show with all you guys. I think so. No, I you so. did often yeah. with us. Ho, ho, the gang's all here. Yeah. Well, I'm talking about a regular show, David. But, yeah, so how's everybody doing? Great. We're we're coming around. Groovy. Trying to be all together. (laughs) Finally thawing out. How's that sound? Exactly, exactly. I think it was like close to 70 today in Chicago. Go ahead, read off your numbers, folks. (laughs) 69 here in New York, in Staten Island and and Manhattan, New York. Yeah, it was like 65 in Maryland and Baltimore. Yep, about that. And Carolyn Carolyn was 110,000 probably. (laughs) (laughs) Hold on, I'll be right with you. Yeah, now, now we, now we get to laugh at you. <laughs> <Yeah>. No. <Yeah. laughs> next one, next one to Carolyn's going to have a whole host of soap opera guests. <laughs> 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 we're all just, we're all just going to hop in an RV and head down and be like, <laughs> knock That's on the door. It, I'm telling you, yeah. <laughs> but you I'll guys are all on the long, East Coast. Long winter, yeah. So I'd have to, I'd have to drive to the East Coast. You know, either to Maryland or New York and then hop in with all you guys and then take our, our way down to uh, to uh, Carolyn in Florida. Sounds like a plan. I was yeah. going to say, sounds like a plan for me. Okay. All right. You got it. You better start bunking up your house, Carolyn. <laughs> you got lots of time right now. <laughs> Get the blow-up mattresses ready. <laughs> So, anyways, um, we've got those daytime Emmys coming up soon. Don't forget to watch the, um, oh, my gosh, what is it called? The Indies on uh, on Sunday. Oh, Pam, can you take this? Um, I have my landlady at my door. Can you take the show for a minute? Um, I, I was talking, but, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> David's in trouble. Oh, no. Oh, he's Uh-oh. <laughs> it's those wild soap opera parties he throws. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. <laughs> he's he's met all those actors, and I bet they're over there partying in the other room, and we don't even know about it. Right. <laughs> well, you're closer than all of us, Anthony, so get over there. I'll hop on a train. Yep, spy on it for us and tell us what's going on. Um, but yeah, what is it? What is it called? The indie? What is it? Oh, gosh, my mind is a blank. Come on, what? Candace, you know Anthony. What the daytime Emmys on Sunday and the Creative Craft Awards is tonight? Is it tonight or tomorrow? Oh, gosh, the Creative is tonight. To... Yeah, tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Creative craft. Yep. Creative arts. That means art tonight and Sunday is the big big show. Okay. All right. That's what it is. A very okay. big show. Yep. Yes, a very big one. Yep. So let's talk about those. We have our our picks picked out. Everybody. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So oh. let's go with best drama series. I'm picking GH because I think. They've been knocking it out of the park, but so is Y and R, so it's kind of hard on that one. So next um, up, I'm going with Days. Um, I think that they had a really great transition. They just knocked it out of the park with the whole um, JJ Abe Theo storyline. Yeah. Um, the way that they resolved the island mess. Um, I think that they had a banner year. My runner-up would, of course, be GH. I think they've been knocking out of the park consistently. But Days made such a marked transition that I think it, it probably will be recognized, and I, I hope it is, actually. 
Well, let me let me add to that, Anthony. Um, you know, all of you guys know, and and now our listeners will know that I've been really behind on all of the soaps because of let's just say life in general with a lot going on here. And um, I've caught up on GH. I've caught up on on uh, Young and the Restless. I'm almost caught up on Bold and Beautiful. I'm I'm 30 days out. So that's not too bad. That'll take me a couple days to to go through because they're only like what 18 minutes long. And um, and she doesn't yeah. want to know who shot Bill. Exactly. I don't <laughs> want any spoilers. I'm trying to figure that out. I I actually stopped my TV when Bill got shot, and I took a picture of the person that shot him. And I've been looking at it, but it's so blurry, and it's so hard to tell. And I'm like, I told David, I said, is it this person? Is it this person? And he's like, nope, nope, nope. And I go, well, if I guess right, you can tell me, but I don't want to know ahead of time. So, um, and days, I'm really far behind, and that's going to be my last one to catch up on. But just watching some of the reels, um, I'd have to agree with you about days. They really have turned around. I mean, even though there's still some darkness um, from what I've seen, it's better than what it was. It's so much better than what it was. And, it, you know, they've made things make sense. They've made, uh, you know, a lot of nods to the historic, the history of the show. Um, you know, which Kalavati is, you know, Ron is, is amazing with bringing, you know, history back in, on. Oh, him. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, they just, they just really knocked it out of the park. Definitely. And if, okay, next up, Carolyn. I think I know what you're choosing. <laughs> well, of course, of course, Dave. Um, and I'm glad they got all the, all the good stuff in before the, the last couple of weeks because the fans aren't happy, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I, I think they're doing fantastic. And again, <laughs> the, the JJ, uh, all uh, all the storyline was, was very real. I thought yeah. it was excellent. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's going to be a tie. I really, uh, I'm the person that everybody will tell you I always want a tie. If I could, I could give Emmy South. I know, right? But... <laughs> no, I would too. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. When it, when it comes down to the drama series, I ha I, I'm split between Days and Young and the Restless. I thought because of the behind the scenes stuff, they did a very good transition. Both of them, um, like you guys said, history on both shows were you know the writers used the history of the shows, you know, which yeah. was good. Um, but that's going to be a tough call because my. I always say this, my heart says a tie, but knowing how the Emmys go, I have a feeling General Hospital is going to get it. Yeah, okay. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised on that. I right, because really it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough between Days and Young and Ruffles. It really is, I'm, you know. Well, you're well, the only one that chose Y&R, but I did say that Y&R has been good, too. So um, yeah. we'll see how it goes. That's our picks, except, David, what's your pick? Well, I have to tell you, Y&R had a little more downs than it did ups, in my yeah. opinion. Um, mm-hmm. Mainly because it seemed like Sally and Kay weren't in it for the long haul, and they seemed to lose interest. In the beginning, you know they had a phenomenal so, showing with the with their Alzheimer, um, you know, bid, and that, mm-hmm, that, they botched that so is, horribly the Call Girl storyline. Um, you know, it just it's it was so up and down all year that I can't see it going to the Young and the Restless. But for as far down as it went, it was still a good show to watch. Mhm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Okay, so next up is, let's see my list here. I made notes, um, Best Actor. Um, I originally was thinking Billy Miller, but after watching James Reynolds' reel, I mean, I was just like, God, it was heart-wrenching and happiness all at the same time, um, seeing that storyline. 
So I'm going to have to go with James Reynolds. Um, that's my pick as well. Um, my secondary pick would be Billy Miller. Um, mm-hmm. The way the Emmys are, I won't be shocked if Billy Miller does take it. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. However, um, on on merit alone, I do believe James. It's James Reynolds here, and he definitely needs to to be re- recognized for it. Right. Right. Carolyn. Um, I'm gonna have to pass. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I don't think we need to ask Carolyn her picks at all because we know it's all going to be case. Yeah. <laughs> oh. um, I feel like the orphan child here. <laughs> it's okay. It's not a bad thing. <laughs> no. I can't. Thanks for interesting comments. <laughs> I'll, I'll uh, jump in if, if I agree or okay. disagree. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I agree about James Reynolds. I think this was his year. It was a banner year for him. Strong material. But again, I got to do a tie because I think if not, if if anything, when you look at the reels, you, you realize these are talented actors, and right. they've been. You know, well recognized, and I and I looked at Peter Bergman's reel, and I'm like, don't count out Peter Bergman, like ah. So again, I have to say a tie. I know everybody's gonna be like, really, can't. Um, no. with, James, <laughs> with James Reynolds and Peter Bergman, I think the vets. I think the vets should get. I mean, yeah, I agree. Billy probably. Would, you know, actually, I wouldn't even be surprised if Roger. Well, Roger's in it. Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised if. <laughs> They they go politics on us in in this category instead of really giving it to somebody who I mean they all truly deserve a nomination but I strongly feel James Reynolds and Peter Bergman should get it. Well, you know I you know I shudder to say these words but I'm going to say them anyway. Politics <laughs> wise, that's why I think James Reynolds is a show in. You know, I don't think any of the other categories are going to recognize um, African-American this year. And so it just is a slam dunk because his reels were just that good. So it, it kind of gives them their get-out-of-jail-free card this year if they give it to him. Hmm. I agree with that. The sad thing is, is that I think we all, you know, we've all been watching the daytime Emmys for so long. That it's it's sort of, and I've been using this word a lot, that they've been conditioned to just do it to make certain people happy instead of really giving it to those who really, truly deserve it. And that's even with nominees, too, because there's a couple of people I think should have been nominated Uh this year that, and over the years that has yet to be recognized, Colin Mosley, Bucky Herbst, Jason Thompson, um, Joshua Morrow. Um, just, sorry, Kathy Caroline. Um, sorry, I'm sorry. Mm, I have a cold. Yeah, that darn cold. I mean, I just look at it as, you know, more GH. You know, you got John McCook. That's going to be, a, it's not going to be a tight call, but I do hope they make the right call. And I right. do think James Reynolds should be among, if they do a tie, I hope James does get it. Right, I'm, I'm a huge Mike Leeson fan. I, I, I really am, am too. But mm-hmm. he should have been play, he should have been put up for supporting actor, not not best yeah. actor. Um, yeah. John McCook, I love him. I do. Yeah. But this, you know, the reels they were strong. They showed his power, but they weren't. You know, there like you said, there were some like leave outs that, you know. Yeah. Well. Unfortunately, I you know there's politics and everything, so you know we can only hope for our pick to come out ahead, and because they deserve it. So, mm-hmm. David, I am. Uh oh, Anthony dropped between James Reynolds and Billy Miller, and I can't make up my mind. I hope it because they're both very. Strong. 
forces. Um, so I'm between those two, uh, and if it's and if those two tie, you got one happy camper over here. Yeah, that would be I'm great. Back. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> no. what happened? Don't I don't do that again, Anthony. <laughs> I just finished that with Billy Miller's real, like when he was with the baby. I've, I mean, granted, Billy Miller is a is, is he is amazing. But yeah. with the real with the baby, I felt like when I was watching it, it took me back to when Billy was on Young and the Rosses with Delia. Yeah. I mean, it's children true. and Billy Miller go hand in hand. I'm telling you, right. it's a blessing. Right. Other than that, I feel as though it could, I mean, I just felt like I, like, and that's what I, with a lot of the reels that I saw, I felt like, okay, wait a minute, you've done this before. Where is the new material? Where is something that I could be like, oh, yeah, that was really good. I just, I don't know. I got gotcha, you, yeah. girl. I believe, yep. yeah. Okay, so next up is Best Actress, I believe I wrote. Yes, Best Actress. I went with Maura West. I think that her scenes with the fire and everything and recuperating and hating herself because she was ugly and, you know, the whole evolution of that, it just, um, I don't know, I thought it was powerful because, you know, you can just imagine all these burn victims in real life, what they go through, and I think she brought it. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Um. I have to piggyback right on that. I've been saying it since the very beginning. Um, you know, when, when the pre noms, the nomination show, and now it's her year, um, you know, the Emmys love a bad girl goes good. So historically, mm-hmm. if she does take it, it won't be a shock. She's powerhouse. She's been put yeah. up how many times at this point? Um, she's been put against every powerhouse actor in the business on the shows that she's been on and she just walks away, you know, she just walks away with the scenes. And this year, like you said, you know, the transformation, the vulnerability, the the Mm -hmm. sheer agony that she portrayed, it was unparalleled. I loved, absolutely loved um, Nancy Legrand's reels. Uh, I want her to be recognized so badly, but I don't feel like it's her year. But um, also I was very surprised um, Abigail, um, um, Marcy Carol, Miller. Here. Marcy Miller. Marcy oh, Miller. Miller. I was really surprised at first that she had made it through, and I want to make apology to all the fans out there because I watched the reels again, and and I have to say, you know what? Coming in as fresh, coming in with mm-hmm. that kind of storyline, coming in against mm-hmm. those powerhouse, you know, uh, actors. She held her own and then ran with it. So I apologize for, you know, counting her out. And you know what, to add to that, I didn't care for her in the beginning, but I think that she's, from what I've seen, she's come around. I mean, she's she's grown on me, and I think she's grown as an actor. By leaps yes, and bounds, when you catch up and you see where she is right now, you're going to mm-hmm. be, you're gonna oh. be floored. You're gonna be blown. Yeah. yeah. You're gonna be blown away. You will. Now I huh? hope I hope that she is in this category next year and I'm gonna make a bet right now that, you know, a hundred bucks if she don't take it around around this table that we're at right now. If she's not in this category bucks. next year, you will be getting you're a nice little check money. Me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I take PayPal. Um <laughs> yeah. <all right. laughs> I, I do too. Do. Starbucks gift cards. <laughs> I take that too. Teacher appreciation week is coming up. I take that too. Oh. Well, I think I think Marcy Miller doing the 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 mental illness part. She's doing a, a fantastic job. I mean, it's not easy going in and out. And how many personalities has she played? Three, four. That's that's been a lot. Oh, no. so. Carolyn's oh. given me spoilers, yeah. but I kind of figured it was oh, something like that when I saw that yeah. 
you know, yeah, it's people are getting Paul, arrested. Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Candace, your pick? I, yeah. I'm actually picking the Natalia Livingston of this of this group because every every Emmy has a Cinderella story. I picked Marcy Miller this year. Oh. I think because the thing is is that everybody that's in this category has won. They are the powerhouses of daytime, and for Marcy to be nominated first time among this elite group, that says a lot. And that also says right. where Dave wants her to be. I do believe, even though, like, Mar West, Mar West is fire. Just fire. Lord Wright. And was in a fire. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> Lord Wright is somebody else real that I was like, okay, I've seen this before. I wish the, right. the, Jocelyn, the Jocelyn scene, I wish that was longer. Because yes. that was what that was the solid part for me. Um, Nancy, I love Nancy, but I don't feel as though her reel was strong enough. I love you, Nancy. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Um, is a GH heavy set. That's why I think it's like okay, you know, any mini money mo. I don't want to say because they want it, they're going to get. But Marcy, I mean, if you watch her reel, you know, going into it. You're probably thinking, oh, okay, yeah, Marcy Miller, okay, <laughs> really, okay. But she will surprise you. A <laughs> real surprise, people. You know, right. so That's what I'm I just... not going to count. Yeah, I, I'm not going to count her out. I mean, she might be the upset of the night in a good way. She's the Cinderella right. of the story. So there you go. See, I picked Marcy. Yay. <laughs> All right. Next David? up, David. Um, I'm looking at Mora West, probably taking it this year. Um, I'm piggybacking on Anthony, saying, with Anthony saying that Nancy's was good, but maybe not ready for this year. So I'm going with Mora West. Okay. And next up is Outstanding Younger Actress, and I went with Haley Aaron. Really? Yes. It's, mm. it's, believe me, it's not easy. If I could do the tie thing like Candace wants, I would do it with a lot of people. But <laughs> I just think that, you know, again, she's another actress that came in all doe-eyed and not Mm, seasoned You know what I mean Like I just didn't think that She could hold her own as an actress In the beginning Like it was her very first job or something And it was from that point that part. Right But that's how I felt That she was That's how you saw it and I think that she's come a long way And I think that she brings it I really do I just I like her now I might have another person that I would pick in that, but we'll let you go ahead, Anthony. Having watched the reels, um, uh, my bold and beautiful girl. I'm sorry, I'm I'm not great with names tonight. Oh, uh, my bold um, and beautiful Rain girl. Rain Edwards. Rain Edwards. Rain yep. Edwards. Thank you. That that truly is my personal pick. However, I think I I have a very strong gut feeling it's going to be Chloe Lanier. And I will not – I'm the controversial one. I will not be upset because I really do think that her reel was power. Well, her that was my line, second choice. That was my second choice was Chloe. Her reels were power. Her storyline throughout the year was so up and down that, that nobody's rooting for her. But the, but what they, the reels they submitted was power. But personally, I would like to see Rain take it. Okay, Candace. I had three, but I'm going to uh, – this is going to get me. I do think Rain was really good. Her reel was really good. It was solid. Chloe, considering the fact that everybody in GH Universe does not like this character, just proves that she is doing a good job 
selling it. That's it. That's it. Thank you. That's, that's it. it. And that's what I have written in my notes, too, for when we talk about GH, that I want to throat punch her because she is just so cruel and and I just can't stand her right now, and I wanted to like her, and there was a point where I did like her, but she, I just, like I said, I want to throat punch her, and that to me shows that she's doing her job. Absolutely. Right. And I have, to, Absolutely. I have to say this. There is such the material begs for it to be overacted. Any other actress, I think, would have overacted some of those scenes, and she mm-hmm. hits it spot on with the snarky, right. Rather than right. the, you know, the Michelle Stafford, you know, I'm cuckoo crazy. Right. <laughs> and that's, that makes it so much, you know, go, more galling to watch. I just feel as though, like, I, and it's funny because in my head I was like, okay, she knows. But, you know, the actress and the writers, they're like, okay, you know the fans do not like this character. So here's what we're going to do. And this is going to guarantee you an Emmy nod. We're gonna go hard right now because it's, it's and it's and, it, and like I said, you know, she may not be the best like fan favorite character, but like I said, that means that she's doing a good job of selling yeah. us. You know, yeah. whether you like the storyline that she's been involved with, which, which was like who gasunk it up and down around the mulberry bush, she's right. going against up against Laura Wright, Maurice Bernard. Mara West, Michelle, I mean, she has gone up against the giants of daytime, and she's held mm-hmm. her own. Mm-hmm. So, I agree. yeah, I mean, that is, I mean, and, <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. I also did and what's your Olivia. third? Olivia from Days. Um, I forgot the character she plays on the show. Um, Claire. Um, <laughs> Claire. Claire. Yeah. Claire. <laughs> yep. Claire. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I'm, I, the reason I picked her was because, again, a lot of people probably didn't like give her. You know, she she holds her own in scenes and everything, and she may not be like everybody's you know personal favorite. But sometimes when you watch the Emmys, they do surprise you. And in this category, anything is possible. Any one of them could to, could walk away with it. Yeah, well, Claire has that little anyone, angelic. That, this is the tricky one. Yeah, yeah. Claire has the angelic face and so sweet, but she's a little devil. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Oh yeah, she's she's. Really... And Mr. David. Well, Rain Edwards has kept me crying for the past three years, and she still hasn't gotten it yet. She deserved it last year, I thought. I'm hoping that I I'm gonna pray for her for again, but I like um just what you said, just because we don't like the character, that doesn't mm-hmm. mean that she's not doing a good job. I think right. it just says the opposite. If right. she can instill the the object of the actor's job is to instill emotion in their audience, and either way, good or bad, she's instilling right. it. Right. She's making I, it believable. Yeah. I'd like to make a prediction, too. If she walks away with it, the big storyline next year is going to be the redemption of Nell through yep. Griffin. Yep. Through yep. Griffin. They're going to pair yep. her with Griffin. Well, I don't know about the pairing with Griffin thing, but I, I think there's going to be a redemption in there, redemption. too. I think after she has the baby... I think that a lot of things oh. are going to change. You know, it maybe melt her heart and see that, you know, being insane and and vindictive is not a good thing. So <laughs> we'll have to I wait and see on that. I have, I, have, I have my own theory about that storyline just now, but with the redemption, it's it's yeah. Okay, I'm just I'm just I just have a feeling that the the adopted father, Carly's adopted father, her father is going to come back in town and something's going to happen. She's going to be like, Daddy, what? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I'm ready to write the story whenever you want me to. I'm ready. 
<laughs> hey, you never know, Candace. I mean, look what happened for Jamie Giddens. I mean, I'm just over the moon and happy so for him. Happy. I, I have said it over and over to him that he needs to be writing for television, for soaps. I've said it so many times. And look at what he's doing. I'm super proud. It, it's, it's funny because I think I had tweet, I found a tweet like three years ago. I said, hey, ABC, NBC, CBS, uh, you need to hire him as a soap opera writer right. because he's amazing. And Right. Oh, so super proud. Yep. Good I'm so happy for him. So happy for him. Okay, next up is Outstanding Younger Actor. Now, let me preface this with, I like Hudson West. I think he does an amazing job as a little kid. But my choice has to be Casey Moss. I couldn't say it better Yay. myself. I feel exactly mm-hmm. the same way. It is Casey, Casey, Casey. Hudson Casey. is great. Second choice, but Casey. Yeah. I mean, that storyline is so relevant in today's society. I cried watching that reel, um, you know, thinking about the the men in blue that put their lives, you know, on the line for us every day and never know if they're making the right decision, but they're doing it to, you know, protect themselves because they don't want to get shot or to protect somebody else. And in the dark, you never know what it is. And when the person won't put the item down that's in their hand, you know, what are they going to do? You have to make that split-second decision. You know, and I have to say that. the guilt that they live with, because don't tell me yeah. real-life cops don't live with that guilt like he did. Yeah. Desperation two, is not easy to play yeah. in any way, shape, or form. But vulnerability mixed with desperation mm-hmm. is almost impossible for a younger actor to play with the with the caliber and the, the merit of how he played it. There was not right. a single moment where I did not believe that he was feeling everything he was feeling. Exactly. That, that every nuance of, of, of it was, you know, he's worked with powerhouse actors for, for four years now. It's obviously mm-hmm. rubs off. He came in very strong, but this, mm-hmm. st- this storyline turned him into a powerhouse himself. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree. I mean, I just love Casey Moss, but I'm telling you, not just because of my love of him, but he just, he banged it out of the park. I felt every emotion that he went through, every emotion, even the part where he wanted to kill himself. I mean, you can understand that that guilt weighed so heavy on him, not just because he shot somebody, but shot somebody he knew. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Knew and loved. And yeah. loved. Yeah, very believable. Yeah, he did an excellent job. He's matured into his part for sure. Yes, yes. I knew you'd agree with that one, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've been rooting for him like for four years. <laughs> yeah. like, give him a good, get, you know, give him something to sink his teeth into, and I think he'll, you know, he'll do it. And this year was, uh, I think, definitely his year. Mm-hmm. And it's not over. I won't tell you. I won't tell you, Pam. But it's not over. Thank you. It's a Thank real, you. Roller, yeah, real, ro- yeah, real ro- roller coaster. You should see what he's going through now. <laughs> oh, I'll catch up soon. Okay. I I always call this the the Jonathan Jackson slash Tom Telfrey Awards because they both. And the reason I say it is because each because obviously Jonathan Jackson, you know, he was such a good emotional actor when yeah, he was a younger yeah. actor, and then Tom Telfrey just brought it, you know, like all the physical oh, yeah. and all the attitude and stuff. So I always call the younger actor awards that because I feel as though whoever is nominated. They have to have the emotions like Casey Moss. That whole storyline was, it was just, it it was real. I always say Mm -hmm. it was real, like outside real and so real, obviously, you know, with Jack, you know, coming back and, you know, having, you know, J.J. just live with the guilt, the consequences of everything because in case, knock on wood, something had happened to, to Theo, you know, he would have had to live with that. Not only that, but his families, the families would have, you know, so to see all of that and go through the emotions and that special episode, the standout episode, that was just, it was, it got to you. But I do have a backup in case, case, <laughs> case, 
I I told you I have a bag up, okay? I think Rome, Rome Flynn, Rome Flynn, Zende from Bold and Beautiful, mm-hmm. I yeah. think he did a great job, too, with his storyline. Story so, yeah, I mean, if Casey doesn't get it, which is going to be kind of a controversial, like, wait a minute, why didn't he get it? Like, his his reel was really good, too. I think Rome should, Roman should get it. Um, I know some people like Hudson West. I mean, he's a baby. He's still growing. <laughs> I like him. Yeah, Honestly, but he's Nicholas. still good at what he does. I mean, yeah. he, he carries a lot yeah. with, like we said, those powerhouses. He stands right in there with them. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, it's but overlooked Nicholas Patel. Nicholas Patel should have been in this category. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. He does they comedy and a, drama. They should have a, they should have a younger, younger outstanding actor yeah. <laughs> and, and put all the kids in there because the kids, I, you know, they're good, especially on G. Well. <laughs> on GH. Yeah, GH well, does have that legacy. That little blonde girl on Young and the Restless drives me absolutely insane. She has one personality, one persona. Hey, Mommy, I'm mad. My faith. I have both in my, my emotions. <laughs> you leave my faith alone. You leave my faith alone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and again, Anthony, I th- I've seen her outside of YNR. That girl can act, so it's just no. the lines that she's been given. Yeah, I, I do agree with you. The stuff she did on Hallmark was amazing. Yes, yeah. so she can act. All right, David, David what about you? Yours? What mine? Mine is Casey Moss all the way. Okay, hands down. You hear this, Emmy people? All right. Uh, next up is Outstanding Supporting Actress. Oh, and okay. I'm going to be honest, I didn't get to watch all of the reels on this one, but I'm going with Cameron Grimes from what I've seen. And I hear nothing. <laughs> um, geez, I agree. I have Get I there. have Cameron down, but I have Cameron down also. But I have I have a debate going on inside me between her and Marla Adams. <laughs> I would wait till um, I finish. This one, this one for me is another slam dunk. Every reel in this category was really, really good. Yep. And then there's Marla Adams. And that's all I have to say. Well, Marla, I think, has done a phenomenal job with this. But I think more so now. You know, like maybe next year I would choose her. Um. I'm I'm a little prejudiced at this point. I, I have Alzheimer's in my family and the slow burn to it, um, the way she just took the character immediately. She came into Genoa City and there was no question as to who she was and what she was. And then as they slowly trickled out the Alzheimer, it it, it really rang home for me. Um I just, like I said, this is a hard category because every single one of them could really take it, in my opinion. But Marla took it. Yeah, I'm just looking at what which ones I watched. I watched Marla. I watched, um, do you say her name, Michelle Morgan? Um, yeah, Michelle. Elizabeth Hendrickson Michelle. and uh, Jacqueline and... Uh, yeah, and um, and Cameron, story. and I just, I guess it's just between Marla's Alzheimer's and Cameron coming out as bisexual, to me, are both important storylines. So it's kind of hard for me, but that's what I went with. Dark horse-wise, though, I do have to just nod at Michelle. Um, you know, she, she, she's just up against such power. You know, she's up in a category where, mm, but she deserves some recognition. 
she does. Mm. That's where Sally and Kay did start doing their best and took care of, started taking care of her and Devon and all that and that's that's when that's when Sally and Kay were good in that era. Honestly those for Michelle in the was. penthouse, which I, I'm shocked that they didn't that they didn't submit those scenes in the penthouse during Devon's accident. Um those scenes might have pushed her over. This is true. Mm. Um, Candace, I can't wait to hear what you got to say. All of them. All of my younger Russell's women. All of them. Take it home, honey. All of them. This is, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to say this because I've heard a lot of people, I mean, even when the nominations came out, I think everybody was like, this is going to be a tough call because you do have six, by, by the way, there's six of the that this is the best and tough category of the night. This is the category right, they're the most gonna be nominated. For, the most yeah. nominated with six. And yep. this is how I broke it down. I was like, all right, Susan Hayes is regardless going to get an Emmy. She's getting mm-hmm. the Lifetime Achievement Award, and she has Bill Hayes. Boom, winner right there. Right, right. Then I'm like, okay, Young and the Rust was heavy. When you saw the nominations come out, everybody was like Marla Adams. Like, yes, give it, yes. When you saw the reels, it was like, oh, Cameron Grimes. Like, hello. How are you? you so you Mr. agree Hill. with me. <laughs> I agree. I mean, the thing is, is that it, it, just, it is going to be a tough call. And I do think Marla is one of the people that should get the Emmy. And I also agree that Cameron. But I'm not counting Michelle Morgan. See, I really wish there was a triple tie. For this category, yeah. because yeah. I, I, I do but, feel this, though, it, 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 this is going to be this is going to be a tough call. But I do think somebody from Young and the Russells is going to get it. And if not, if they can't make a decision, I think Jacqueline will get it. I th- okay. You know how okay. like how they keep, sometimes they can't make up their decision. They, I mean, not saying Jackie's not a bad. I mean, she's she's a good actress, but in this category. This is a this is a nail biting category. Yep. So this is Emmy people take note. Seriously, put to vote next year going the Olympic route: gold, silver, <laughs> bronze, and honorable yes. mention. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. Yes. Totally agree. With oh, that. what? What? Yeah. yeah. This is true, but my top was Marla and Cam, and I, uh, whew, I don't know if I'm ready for that category on Sunday to be announced. I, I know, be right? Someone, I'll probably leave out for a few minutes and come back and be like, okay, who won? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or just just have your bottle of wine next to you, that's all. <laughs> have a bottle, a bottle of tequila, and gotcha. All right, tequila, gotcha. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Patron. <laughs> <laughs> that works <There> too. <laughs> and David? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm between Cameron and Marla. Um, okay, so we're all pretty much on the same page. Yeah. Um, it's going to be something else to see. Okay, and the last one is Outstanding Supporting Actor. I didn't go with guests and all that stuff. Um no. figured we don't have a whole lot of time here. I mean, we do have two hours, but we also have four soaps to get through. So Outstanding Supporting Actor, um, I did not get to watch every single reel. Um, I did watch, oh, let me look. I watched Greg's, Greg Vaughn's. And I watched, um, I'm going through looking. What scene was on his uh, reel, Um, Pam? Um, Nicole. Doing the stuff with Nicole, you know, telling her he loves her and all that. Um, I'm trying to think what else I watched. I don't know. But anyways, I chose him. I think Carolyn did too. (laughs) You <laughs> think? Well, uh, um, and, uh, and the actor that plays Aim was he not uh, nominated as well? Um, let me see. Does anyone know? 
Which one? Chandler Massey. No. Chandler Massey, yes. This is a rollout from Days, I think. And the one that plays Abe. I thought he was uh, for... The one who... James? The one nope. who plays Abe. James was best actor. No, James was lead yeah, oh, actor. Uh, oh, actor. Okay, okay. I thought it was supporting. Okay. Well, then I guess it's going to be Greg Vaughn. <laughs> I'm going to be controversial. The person who should win this award wasn't even nominated, um, Vincent Uh-oh. Nerzari. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I agree, I agree there. <laughs> um, but he wasn't nominated. I, I'm, I'm going with Chandler Massey. Um, oh. This was another oh. really hard category. It was hard. I think... I think the way they brought him back is going to really resonate with the with the voters. Um, he's a favorite to begin with, and oh, yeah, um, they wanted him back. Yeah. You know his re- his, real his reels. Yeah. His reels his were real really good. The they chose. Yeah, his reels was wrenching, wrenching. Oh. And uh, <laughs> hi, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. Hi. Okay. Here's the thing. I, I like Chandler, but his reel wasn't as strong. Um. So I, I, that's my opinion. DH should be should be happy that Wally Kurtz is on their show. I'm just gonna put it like that too. The two that I pick again, Ty, <laughs> is Greg Vaughn because my God, it's Greg Vaughn. That yes. Is- Prove yes. why he is a top notch actor. Okay. Yes, he's come a long way from Young and the Russells and General Hospital. Yes, he has at Malibu Shores and Charmed. He's come a <laughs> long way. He has the fire, he has the passion, and that was a damn good reel. Top notch. Anthony okay. Montgomery is another person that just blew it out the water for me. This is not as tough as supporting actress, but there needs to be justice for supporting actor. And Greg Vaughn and Anthony Montgomery should, and I'm going to say, will win on Sunday. And if not, I'm drinking tequila. (laughs) (laughs) Are you drinking tequila? Are you having shots for the winners or the losers? (laughs) Both. (laughs) Both. Uh Uh-oh. I'm having shots for all of them. Every time, no. every time a nomination is read, I'm having shots for everybody. Uh, <laughs> yay! Can we go live Why Sunday? <laughs> we'll either be crying or, uh, for happiness or sadness, one or the other. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, they're all winners in my book. And so yeah. it, it all comes down the way I look at it. I root for who I want to win, who I think deserves to win. But then when somebody else wins, I'm like, okay, well, at least they won. You know, that kind of thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your, sec- right. your yeah. second yeah. choice, your third choice, whatever. I mean, it, it's different now because of there's only being the four soaps and it was, you know, instead of the seven or eight or whatever, it, it was harder then. But I, I thought until it came down to the four soaps. Now I think it's even harder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just hope that the Emmys, like, it's considering that this is the 45th annual daytime Emmys, and like they said, they're going to do a celebration of daytime, and I really hope they do. I think I still bitter that it's not on television. But, you know, I want this to be a celebration. You know, they're celebrating uh, Young and the Russell's and General Hospital's anniversaries. You're going to have some past winners as well as the present, you know, soap stars. So I really do hope that this is the best that it's been. And I just hope that, um, you know, everybody has a good time. I mean, it's a celebration of daytime, you know. You right. know I want Young and the exactly. Russell's to win. <laughs> I, you know, I honestly hope that they take the best moments from all the shows that have left us. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I know they can't do all of them. You know, like, we can leave out Dark Shadows. We can leave out Edge at Night. But we really <laughs> need to see Judith Light standing up screaming, you want me to admit I'm a hooker? We oh. need to see 
you know, we need to see Rachel Corey going insane. Uh, you know, we there are some moments that need nod, and I hope that they don't they don't ignore what's what's you know what's left us. I hope they don't ignore what what paved the way for what we have left. That's what I really hope for this broadcast. I, I think it's interesting because for the daytime Emmys, I mean, you have Peter Marshall. Peter Marshall will be there, and as everybody knows, he was one of the first um, hosts of the daytime Emmys along with Barbara Walters. You're going to have Elizabeth Hubbard. You know, many people know her as Lucinda on As the World Turns. Oh, She's on Anacostia, the series, but she was on oh, Doctor. Yeah. And she yeah. won the very first Emmy for Lead Actress. So I, I kind of hope that they do. You know, it was always something I said is that when they celebrate the Emmys, they should have, like, past actors of daytime, you know, Emmy Award winners and the current, you know, to pair them up. You know, have, um, you know, Linda Dano with. Uh, who who is big and loud right now in daytime? Uh, I mean, like a Courtney Hope. I'm just I'm just throwing names out there, like mix matching a little bit, you know, and, you see, and just have it like that. So the honor, the past, and the present. This is the, the year future. that they should have had that they should have had all the ba- all the past best actress winners, all the past best mm-hmm. actor winners lined up behind instead of a curtain lined up behind the, the winner of this year as he's or yes. she is delivering Good his idea. speech. <laughs> yeah. Good idea, yeah. They should have Elizabeth Hubbard do that. Now that I think about it, they should have the first first lead actress win, winner to present for this year's lead actress that would, category. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah they it could, would be. And, and if they could have, I'm just throwing this out there, Emmy people, I mean, next year you can do it. For lead actor, they could have had, I know a lot of people would be like, really? Like Tony Gary and Justin Deeds. If Justin, see, this is why they need to go back to New York. For this. <laughs> I mean, just to kind of like, you know, to kind of have it, have it, you know, together. And, and yeah, you're right to, to remember those folks that have left, you know. And they could have the, head, the fans that, the, Yeah, the fans that have hung in there over the years, they would definitely appreciate that. All us mm-hmm. old, old timers, <laughs> for sure. Right. <laughs> you know, even if, even if you took, you know, Susan Lucci and she gave a two minute speech about all my children, and Erica Slezak gave a two minute speech about yeah. one life to live, and um, who uh, Kim Zimmer for guiding Zimmer. light. Yeah. yeah, you know, um, you know, something of that, or if they did it with the males, you know, if they did something of that caliber to just say, you know, the four that are here are here because of these that have left us yes. along the way. Mm-hmm. And those of you that are staying with us and staying with whatever of the four or all four, let's hope, you know, thank you for staying. Thank you for choosing another soap when yours left. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, can give, you can give a shout out to, you know, to the online web content, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. like, you know, Elizabeth Hubbard is still working, thanks to Anacostia, the series. You know, Martha Byrne is still working because of Anacostia. I mean, you have some of these daytime players crossing over into the new generation of soap. Now. Absolutely. And, and I'd love to see that celebrated next year, but this year is about the history, and I, and, and I yeah. have a feeling that it's all going to be bur- – it, it, that a lot of it is going to be buried under under promotion for what's here. I don't think the web series are going to get the attention that you, that they deserve, and next year should be a big push for for overlapping categories and bringing them more into the fold. Yeah, because I always say without with this genre, there's a past, gone by as well terms edge. There's a present with the four, and now it's the future. And also, little shade. I really want E News to be there next year for the daytime Emmys since they could. Since they have, you know, neglected that General Hospital is the longest running show on ABC. I'm sorry, I had to get that out of my chest. <laughs> <laughs> that was a Twitter thing that I was a part of since they said Grace and Yeah, Andy we'll go on ABC's there. Longest. Yeah, yeah, tweet, yeah, tweet, like, tweet really? them out. Oh yeah, I, t- I tweet. Make oh, them feel me, guilty. I did. Trust me, I went. I yeah. went so proper school on them, and told them. I said, "Hey, General Hospital is the longest running." So, uh, drama on ABC, not Grey's Anatomy. And I said, if you really want to go there, here's the history of all the soaps in order. I said, General Hospital is the fifth longest soap opera in U.S. history right now. And I was <laughs> somebody retweeted, they was like, school them, Candace, school them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was 
I'm like, don't get me. I said, don't get me started about Days of Our Lives. And somebody was like, oh, yeah, Days of Our Lives. Is, I was like, no, it's the fourth longest running show on NBC's 90-year 90, 90 history. I was like, yep. just to let everybody know that. See, I had, see. Mm-hmm. They need the recognition. And I'm, t- yep. I'm tired of the, the one-person talk shows and, oh, my God, and the game shows and. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Still gonna, yeah. Yeah. We've got we've got to keep the daytime drama going. That's right. Well, guys, we're at the hour mark, so I think it's time we need to move on to the soaps, and we'll start with Y and R. And okay. my very first note is Victor's story. Um, I truly think that this is one of the best storylines he's done yet. Um, all the emotions. He is very believable as being disabled at this point and everything that he's gone through. The scene with him and Nick made me choke up. Oh, my God. I, mean, I yeah. just. I, oh, yeah. It just. I, I think it's phenomenal. I really do. I think it's probably the best storyline, although I think there's a lot of good storylines on there right now, but I think it's the yeah. best storyline right now. It is. Okay. And I do have to say one thing. Um, I mentioned on the past show that while while I was very sad to see, to have JT be... Um, portrayed as an abuser. I've learned a lot because I didn't know that that was actual abuse that he was doing in the first place. I was schooled on one of the Facebook groups by a couple of uh, by a couple of women uh, um, who uh, set me straight. And I uh, and the thing is, although I didn't want to see it. I think YNR portrayed it well because, in, in all honesty and in respect, it is the last person you would expect. And uh, because because these guys know how to hide it well from the public. Yes, they mm-hmm. do. I've been through it in real life, so I can attest to that. I have to respectfully disagree, David. Um, I think that they rushed the storyline. I think that they did. They probably did. They didn't well, that highlight part, it. Yes, I agree with that part. They I didn't agree highlight with. the way it really needed to be highlighted. It was it it was very reminiscent of you know the call girl with a with a heart of gold that they did last year. Um, you know they kind of started it in a slow burn fizzled it real fast and tied it up way too quickly. Um, yeah. So it didn't have the emotional impact that it really could have and should have had. Um, however, I did also learn a lot. Um, JT was a character that just, if you're going to bring him back, you know, I think they sh- if they were going to do the storyline, they should have done it with someone on canvas. You know, uh, Daniel Goddard would have been amazing as a slow burn up to it that, you know, he just sort of, you know, let loose and became a bad boy again, but in 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 that way. Um, the Victor, the Victor storyline, they have floundered with him for the last couple of years, not really knowing yeah. where to put him, not keeping his personality consistent. Um you know, he's he became more of a character with the mustache than he did a powerhouse mm-hmm. character. And so I'm so glad that they're giving him material that's that's worth playing. And everyone around him is just better because of it. Um Yeah, you know, they're they're on fire right now, Young and the Restless, and two weeks ago no, a month ago, I was Sort of like, where is this going? With the hasty Chelsea exit and everything surrounding that, I said, they have no idea what they're doing, where are they going, and I'm glad they're back on track. And I have to say, the the big reveal that's coming of the Abbott, you know, Abbott, non-Abbott, let's call it, is, is mm-hmm. I, if they do it right, is going to be powerhouse. Or as Candace would say, fire. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> it is, well, I, I mean, could definitely see um, 
Yeah. Eric Braden being nominated for Best Actor mm-hmm. next year for this. Who doesn't think oh, yeah, that definitely. Victor is Jack's father? Bueller? Bueller? Anyone? Uh, I will tell you that no. if Young and the Ruffles does that, if Young and the Ruffles does that, I'll be completely 110% honest. That will actually cause a decline. I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to speak for myself. If they say that Victor is Jack's dad, <laughs> I will laugh at the show because I don't want one, it either. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be a mockery because, I mean, yeah, granted, they they would be doing what what they did a few years ago with Jill and Catherine. You know, it was a exactly. happy period, and right. then all of a yeah. sudden you yeah. found out that they were related. Are you serious? Like, you cannot right. – no, if you learn any – if that show, if CBS, Sony, anybody who's still a part of that team from that, that time frame learned anything, that was one of those soap hopper blunders, like, oh, God, what did we do? It, no, no, hell no. No. Don't do it, Young and the Russell. Yeah. Don't, no, don't. don't don't even make them brothers. Don't even make them brothers. Yep. Thank you, Candace. <laughs> don't, for, don't don't make them related at all. Exactly. Because I, because it's gonna be that whole Newman Abbott, who's been married, who's been sleeping with who, the ick factor comes up because Kyle and Summer. Then you got no. Mm. I I got yeah. you. I got you on that. Yep. Mm-hmm. I don't want it to happen, but it, it's just, I mean, unless it's a real big red herring, that's, it, that seems to be where it's going. No, 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 no. Oh, I hope. No. We're, not even, we're not even putting that thought in the universe. Take yes. it back, Anthony. Take it back. <laughs> take it back. I take it back. I take it back. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I, I would like to put it on, I would like to put something on the floor saying that maybe Dean is making this whole thing up. Well, I don't think and, that she's making it up. She's doing it purposely. I think it's just the Alzheimer's. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I, I, I'm, I'm going to everyone. Put, oh, go ahead. No, that you said it. Yeah. That I think I think it's the disease, and then that's what I'm hoping for. That it's oh, just right. making her think. Maybe it's really Brent Davis after all, and she's thinking about Ashley. Right. Right. I'm oh, I like that. I like that better. I'm going to put this album <laughs> on the floor. I don't think it's Ashley. I don't think it's Jack. I think it's actually Tracy. You think it's Tracy? I think it's Tracy Ooh. that might not be a true Abbott because it's, I mean, here's, okay, as a fan of Young and the Rust since, since I was born, I do remember <laughs> the what if about Jack's paternity because it was so heavy set, you know, on Ashley that everybody used to say, well, what if it wasn't Ashley? What if it was Jack? And this has been an ongoing thing with writers if they were going to do the story or not. But because they just didn't want to upset fans, truth be told, they never went there. So when this story came out, it was like, oh, okay. But at the same time, it's like, okay, well, Tracy, Tracy is so – I mean, she's emotionally obviously she's emotionally connected to the family. I mean, that is her, 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 her savior. You know that you know everything that she's been through, Colleen and Brad and all that stuff. That's her savior. You know the family. Yeah. So it would be a surprise, and knowing how young in them, they like to do things like this. It's like ah, you thought we were going to do this ah, you know. I I wouldn't be surprised if down the line before the disease really takes shape, really, like, really, you know, gets to her, Padina, that is actually Tracy. That's not a true Abbott. Yeah, they're twisted enough to do that. Here's where I think they're dropping the ball. I think they could be using Dina a little more, and I think that they could be having her go into past conversations a little bit more the way GH is doing with Mike, um, but even stronger bringing out some of these past incidences and then maybe even putting in flashback clips. You know, yeah, they can. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think they're really kind of, they're throwing the nod to the history, but they're not dribbling the ball and they're definitely not shooting it. I also yeah. think they're trying to rotate a lot of the stories 
they're trying. I mean, the thing is, unlike another show, <clears throat> um, they <laughs> they take their their top stories and it's like a rotation. It's like okay, this week we're going to tell this story. The next, like at the same time, we're going to do a little follow up to the second story that we're telling. Next week, the right. second story will take front, and then it's just like rotation. And now you got Kyle. <sighs> Can't stand that, Brad. I'm just saying. All righty. Mm. But I like the actor. <laughs> uh, now, the thing is, the next thing I have written down is Victor, Nikki, open marriage. Why? Just why? <laughs> okay. <laughs> that goes back a little long. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how much time well, do you David, have? Well, David, David, you, David, you told me why, but I'm just saying why. I mean, this to me it's I unnecessary. Know. I don't see this as part of any history, any new history to be made, any reason. I, it just to me, it's it's a useless storyline. I, I have to 100% agree with you. It would have had so much more impact if they did it with Kane and Lily. Or Devon and Hillary, you know, this, why? Exactly why? If they really wanted to tell this story, they should have told it with a couple that was really going to ignite some, um, Attention. some fire on the, on the, the boards, the fandom, so on and so forth. No one cares for Nikki and Victor as far as this is concerned. They don't want to see them in bed, and they really don't want to see them in bed with anybody else. No, I I cringe every time I see Nikki with what's his face. Arturo. I just uh, Ar- yeah, I just can't. I just can't. Yeah. And and it, it's not the age difference. It's just the knowledge of knowing that they're married and they they agreed to do this. To me, why do you stay married? And I know it's reality. I know people have open marriages, but I'm just one of those types. It's my opinion only. I do not agree with it. And this is why, yeah, Pam, it was the safe way for them to tell their story and test the waters on another story that's coming. They dropped the ball, and they did a horrible job with the hookers, and other shows are doing socially relevant sh- storylines that are burning up the fandom, and this was their safe way of, a, of seeing if their middle America audience will take to something. They really got a lot of flack with, with the lesbian. And so now they're trying to segue into something a little bit more vanilla but kinky, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. I pass. I might be the only one that actually likes this story. You do? (laughs) I'm going to tell you why. I think think you are the only one. (laughs) Okay. I would have to speak for myself. Here's the thing. Like I said, as a viewer, since my mom pushed me out, the thing is, Victor, I, between Victor and Nikki, they always have, in, in my weird way, and I'm looking at, I think you guys are going to talk about the JT thing, too, is they always had this kind of relationship where, well, Nikki had, like, low self-esteem. This is my, my take, okay, that Nikki feels as though, okay, yeah, she's attractive, but nobody really, you know, because she's Victor Newman's dare I say property, I don't think I should say that, but that, you know what I mean. Victor's always mm-hmm. got the youngins, Sharon, Sabrina. He, you know, he has that, that, that thing Diane, that the women like. Diane, right. Yep. So to me, I feel as though, like, Nikki feels as though, well, huh, you think you can get a little young thing? Well, guess what? I'm going to get one tip. And I feel as though, you know, in public, they have to keep up their appearance. They have to. They're the new yeah. ones. They, you know, represent family unity, and, they, you know, Victor built the company from ground up and all this stuff. And Nikki said, you know, nice lady that helps with the flowers and, and, and Catherine Park and, you know. So I think it's like one of those tests how strong, like, like their love. Like, okay, can you see me with somebody else? Do you love me enough to see me with somebody well, else? And it's a weird you're way saying, of me looking at this story. <laughs> no, you're saying it exactly right with the with very weird words. They're at their best when they're winning each other back from someone else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or consoling yeah. themselves, consoling the other one back away from someone else. That's when they're at their best. 
Well, even though they they agreed to be in an open marriage, you can tell there's jealousy on both parts. Oh, yeah. So you know where that's going to end up. They're going to end up quitting this open marriage thing and getting back together. I still just think it's a useless storyline. I just really do. It's a redemption (laughs) story. It's a redemption storyline. There's no, you know, there's no way to justify them coming together yet again after all the damage that's been done without throwing some sort of weird monkey wrench into. And so we had the open married monkey wrench. It's the monkey with the symbols going ding, 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 ding. Look at me. Yeah, but to me, to me, that redemption, the redemption could have been Victor almost dying, you know. And there she is yet again thinking I can't live without you, we, you know, I love you no matter what, don't die, you know. I mean, it's it's been played before, and I guess this is a different way of doing it, but that, to me, yeah. is is a way of getting them back together again, you know. See, what, so, what, kills me, what kills me about every soap that's on the map right now is they'll never take the watershed moment where Victor just says, you know what, I've been an S bag. I did this, I did mm-hmm. this, I did this, I did this. I orchestrated Adam, I orchestrated Chloe, did it, did it, did all across the board. I love you. I've done everything to show you that I don't love you, but I do take me back. And they won't go there. And that would that would garner such talk, such ratings, if they went balls to the floor and just threw it out and let one character have the complete breakdown and build back up. With each other, it would be powerhouse. Young and the rest, yeah. if you're listening, you may take my idea and credit me much later on. <laughs> I agree with you because there's been moments out, you know, throughout the years of Nikki and Victor, there's been moments where one of them wants to say that, or you 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 feel this yep, they right. should, you know, like last year was at the MS um, gala. With Victor and Nikki, you know, you kind of can see, like, okay, come on, eyes is speaking here, but words need to come out. Like, come on, you guys are the love of, of each other's lives. If something happened And a year and a half ago, they up. almost did it with Jack and Phyllis. They were right on the yeah. edge. Both of them were admitting they were just about, they were just about to go there. And then, boom, they cut that storyline so quick. Mm-hmm. And it was such a letdown. I was so ready for it. No. Do you think they did that with Hillary and Devon recently? In a like different way, yes. Hillary... Yeah. Yes. Yes. And they, instead of turning her into this, like, wannabe Mary Sunshine for a couple of weeks, they should have had her have her watershed moment. And if they did it on GC Buzz, all the better. I would have been and all if upon they that, too. It over in Los Angeles, you know, if they had Steffi mention, oh, my God, did you see what's going on in Genoa City? That would even make it even better. Or have or have Sheila watching it with a with a bowl of popcorn going, Yeah. <laughs> okay. Woulda coulda shoulda, we have to move on because we're at forty five minutes and we're only getting to one soap here. Real quick real quick on JT's death and cover up again, why I don't think it was an intentional murder. Anybody that watched it can see that. I put a poll out, I said who will crack first and tell the G C P D about it? And most are choosing Victoria. Let me look. I could tell you what the percentage is. 53% choose Victoria, 5% Nikki, 37% Sharon, and 5% Phyllis. I chose Victoria because I think the guilt will get to her, especially after Reed's departure and Matt's visit today saying how much her kids need to see their father. Yep. Agree 100%. Yeah, Victoria. Yeah, I was the one. I voted for Sharon only for the obvious because it looks like she's not keeping it together. And Nick is very close to, seems very close to maybe pushing her in that direction. Yeah, but I think Sharon's more controllable, and I think just Victoria's going to do it without even saying anything to anybody. I think she's just going to go there, and and I think she's she's probably going to say she killed him. You know, I don't think she's going to throw anybody else under the bus. Yeah, I think so, too, actually. Yeah. I agree. I think Sharon, I think in my head there's going to be a scene where Sharon and Victoria are talking privately, knowing that it's open-door policy, 
and Victoria is going to say something about JT's death, she's going to be the one that snatches. She'll she'll be the one. It's getting it's going to get to her. I mean, okay. The best moment would be if she breaks down and tells Mac. That would be that would be a, a phenomenal scene. That would be. All right. So, so what's up is next? Minute. You hit GH. Pam. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I had to mute myself for a minute. Okay. Okay. My oh, next okay. note. My next note is Phyllis get a life. Yes. Please. She's in. She's 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 in everybody's business but her own. Uh, That's true. She's trying to be a right fighter, and half the time I just want to slap her. Just leave everybody alone. <laughs> Get your own life. She's old school Phyllis. Old school Phyllis has come back home. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> she makes me insane sometimes. I mean, poor poor Billy sitting there, you know, da, 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 da. where's Phyllis? What's Phyllis doing today? Well, just, Billy push, is. Billy's been pushing her just as much as she's pushing herself, quite honestly. Yes and no. There's certain times that he tells her, okay, enough, you know, but I I just, that's all I have to say about Phyllis. Get a life. And the uh, the next one, Kyle, he's another one I want to throat punch. (laughs) I I can't wait for, I can't wait for, for, for him to be brought down a thousand notches. (laughs) Working for Victor all this time. So proud of him. That is Diane's son right there. Diane Jenkins will be so proud of him. Yeah, right. absolutely, yes. <laughs> so proud of you, Kyle. But I agree, I want to punch him too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. Oh, my God. He, he, but you know what? I got to give Young and Russell's credit because they are making Kyle like Jack from, like, the 80s. A little bit, like scheming yeah. Yeah. and and whatnot. So I got to give props to Younger and Russell because this is what Kyle should have been doing all of this time. I mean, I know they've been trying to find an actor, and you know, the, and the right material, and this is actually the right material for yeah. for Jack Jr. to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jack Jr. Yeah. Yeah. with his mother. That's it's all written right there. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay, so wrapping up on Y&R, we'll move on to GH. Poor Carolyn. I'm sorry. This won't happen <laughs> once I catch up on days. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, um, learning, I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you, Carolyn. Um, and GH, I hate that they let Drew and Sam get married before she figured out she's in love with both guys. Um, oh. Now she's on her caper with Jason, so that's going to bring them closer. Not sure who I want her to be with, to be honest. Love Sam and Jason together when Steve was on, but Billy owned that role and made a good couple with Sam. Go. <laughs> um, I, Carolyn, your turn. I'm opposite of you. I'm loving the idea that they had, that they had her marry. I'm loving that she had no. to have the conversation. I loved Drew's devastation, though I did not agree with him walking out. But I love the conversation. I love the, the powerhouse that went into it. I'm loving them on their caper. I, anything that has Spinelli in it, I will always love. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm actually loving Jason and Anna together as far as, as forming that, you know, it shows that five years did do something to that character, that he isn't just Stone Cold anymore. Right. Um, I'm, I'm loving yes. that this Heimer thing is so classic, so it's so a nod back to GH in the 80s and the early 90s. Um, you know, even when, when Robert made the Bobby reference, I almost fell off the couch. I was so happy. Um, yeah. You know, right now, I think it's on fire. I think where they're dropping the ball is Nell and Michael. Um, it's, it's not believable. So, you know, it's just they're dropping the ball there. Um, just about everything else right now, I am loving Candace? Okay. It's going to be really nice tonight. I'm going to be really nice. I I do like the torn Sam. 
I agree, you know, her and mm-hmm. Drew, then Jason. But I defend that because she thought this man was Jason, you know. So, right. you know, of course, when he was revealed to be Drew, she was still married to the idea of what Jason could have should have been yes. with her. And when the real yeah. Jason came back, it was like, okay, wait a minute, five years has passed. I'm a mature mother. Where do I, you know, where is my, you know, loyalties at? Who do I, you know, do I stick with the past or do I move forward with the with the future? I like how they're playing that part. I need more stuff from Jason, though. I feel as though that's where, if you're going to tell this umbrella storyline, you better give me the whole umbrella. Not just half of it, but the whole. I like the use of the Anna. I, well, let me say this. I like the Jason and Anna stuff because it gives me a little bit of a little bit of a nod to Jason and Robin. Yes. And, and whatnot. The part with this whole Anna has a son thing. Okay, can I be really honest with you guys? Okay. You sure this can. Gonna, go on, girl. Go on, girl. The, <laughs> G.H., I'm mad at you for for turning Anna into a rapist. I'm sorry. You're telling so many social relevant, you know, relevant storylines right now. And I understand rewrites happen. <laughs> Look, I've been watching so for a very long time. But that was the one that I was just like, are you kidding me? The way you made it sound, okay, she was an under, you know, spy. And she took phrase on and, you know, he, he was under the influence. And you had her have sex with him. That's, I don't sorry. get that either. Right. That is such a slap in the face of this strong female character that so many females mm-hmm. love because she was superwoman. You know, she was, a, you know, and you did this, and then you say they, they had a child, which is, I mean, look, a soap villain and, and, and a non-soap villain having a kid, that that's classic, but you just really, you really did this, and I, I'm sorry, I have to put a thumb down on that. I, I, yeah, I agree. I I agree. I agree, yeah. I agree to disagree with your point. You can look at it both ways. She mm-hmm. was classic '80s, you know, powerhouse that she took control and then it spiraled out of her control. You don't have right. to look at it as though she was the rapist or that she's the victim. You know, either way, she bested him in the end. I mean, you know, you I can think look what at it, it. I think what it is is the way. Considering the times that we're in right now with the Me Too movement and a lot of things, I don't think they should have had that part of the story come up. You could have said, you know, you could have hinted and said that they had a child. I think if they didn't say under, if he wasn't under the influence, that might have yeah, made you know a what? difference. There would but be other it, factions it's, it's bitching if it was too. mind control or if it was an accident or if he forced her. There's no real good way to have done this. So go the classic soap yeah. route and use the use the power that Anna once was and the fact that mm-hmm. she's always done vulnerable really well. It spirals out of her control. It's also in a real kind of backwards backdoor way, a nod to her daughter Lenora too. True. You know, and I think a lot more is going to come out between Anna and Robert about various portions of her life because of this. I just, you know and if what, somehow you know it brings Dr. David Hayward into Port Charles, I will You're not I've been saying this for the longest time. Like, come on now. Like, David should be already at General Hospital. Yeah. He should be yeah. a part of this storyline. I mean, yeah. I think, you know what he it should be, Dr. That, Bench. No, no, no. Dr. David Hayward. Yeah, but but not not what he's doing. Not what Doctor Hayward could be doing. A lot of things. Oh my God, him and Doctor Albright would have a great scene together. Oh, oh my God! God. <gasps> I just had a uh, just, just so okay. Carolyn Carolyn. Just so you know, Doctor Hayward is played by Vincent Irizarry. So there you go. Mm-hmm. That'll make you watch GH. <laughs> <laughs> so good, so good. I think he is he on there? Is he on there now? Is he on there? No, but we. Oh. We no, want him to just oh. wishful thinking. Oh. Please, please let that be this year. Please let this be this year. Please, I've been a really good soap fan. Please, 
please? Oh. <laughs> no, <laughs> I know. The, the, the Here, uh, all I want for uh, Christmas is Dr. Tampa. David Haywood in General Hospital. <laughs> and oh, my God, think about Thank that. Tim chief of staff. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, we're into 30 minutes. My next thing is Alexis, Finn, Anna, Julian, Kim, Drew. What is that called? A rectangle? <laughs> <laughs> Boring. Oh, no, um, octagon. A rub- octagon. A rhombus? Is it a octagon. Rhombus? Octagon. <laughs> the non-vulnerable, beautiful triangle. You know, you know what cracked me up. Alexis saying to Finn, "You want to do it again?" <laughs> <laughs> I thought you that was what? so funny. If if Y and R can have an open marriage, then they need General Hospital needs to do a swingers party and just have them all come on in, <laughs> bring in Sam and Drew as well, I know. and just swing it out and may the best partners win. They could have did that swingers party at, at uh, the uh, uh, Luke's bar thing with with uh, Max Gale oh with my Mike. They, it was they all prime the, right there. They could all been drunk and said, "Hey, <laughs> I slept with you. Wait, I haven't event. slept with you yet. Let's go." <laughs> you know. <laughs> the next big GH event, Nell needs to spice the punch with you know one of David one of David Haywood's concoctions and just That's get them right. all loopy loose, loopy oh, loose. Oh my God! <laughs> wait, oh God. I just thought of a story. I just thought of a story how they could make Nell really interesting. Half hard really be David Hayworth's like long lost daughter. Oh, oh my God! Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God! Yes. Let me get my that notebook. That would be perfect. Like, gonna start Frank, writing. if you're listening, Stand Frank. Your notebook out. Using Frank. Yep. Kate Hall, <laughs> I got you, girl. Kate, Chris, <laughs> Shelly. <laughs> I will oh not gosh. ask for a single remuneration. I don't want a penny. Just take the idea and use it. Exactly. Exactly. I want to <laughs> do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's All do right, it. so the next one is I'm torn about Maxie forgiving Lulu for Nathan's death. I valued their friendship, but I think that Lulu is partially responsible for his death. I Okay, um, with all that they've forgiven each other for in the past, this can't be the end. It's right. just addition well, to their legacy. Well, I agree with that. Mm-hmm. But I am torn. I am definitely torn with how she, how it comes about. Yeah. And I have yeah. to say, I'm in a minority. I love her and Peter. I absolutely love her and Peter. Oh, no, you're not in the minority. You're not. I love them together, too. They've got chemistry. I'm with you on that one. And that's so classic soap. You know, it's, you know, it's Franco and Liz all over again, really. Mm. When, he, when it yeah. comes out, if she stands by him, I will be the happiest soap camper ever. Yeah. This, uh, I'm with you on that. Candace. Go ahead. We know um, you've got two cents. <laughs> I feel as though, you know, I like Maxie and Lulu as friends, but also like them as enemies. Mm-hmm. <sighs> With that being said, I just, uh, I have nothing else to say because I'm kind of disappointed. I don't like the fact that they're pushing Peter and Maxie. I just can't with this story. That's all I have really? to say. See, yeah. I like them together, but I think it's moving too fast because, to me, Maxie only grieved one day. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but you know what? If they play it right and she has an emotional breakdown right as they start to really get together, then they've done, then they've done it right. That she's in complete denial right now and using Peter as, as a shield against her emotions, and then – Oh my God! I really have emotions, but I still have these Nathan emotions. Boom! He's Heinrich. Boom! That's so yeah. classic soap. You know, yep. Yep. you know, the only thing that's come out of, out of this whole storyline is I'm so glad to see this fan base is the Maxie and Michael fans because I'm like, where have you guys been at? Because some people really kind of want them to hook up. They don't. Peter is just. I mean, I, look, I like Wes. I really do. But Peter, I just feel as though he's the male version of Nell. <sighs> well, I'm still well trying to figure. I'm still trying to figure out if he's good or bad or both, and if he wants to kill his mother or lover. You know, I'm just like. 
I'm still, you know, going back and forth with that because I, I'm not sure what I missed, but I missed something. Um, how do Peter and Valentine know each other? And, you know, what is, what's going on there? I watched everything, but somehow or another I missed that. Valentine works for Helena at one point when Helena was hooked up with Faison and Heinrich is yep. a son, so he, we're just supposed to assume that that's how they cross paths. They never fully exactly. never gave us an explanation. Oh, okay, so I didn't miss it. Okay. No, you didn't mm-hmm. miss anything. Okay. All right, so the next storyline that I want to mention is Franco's storyline. Um, oh, God, That yeah. blew me away. That blew me up. Franco, uh, Roger Haworth, um deserves an Emmy for this. Um, this was a very hard storyline. This is not something that men usually want to talk about and, no. you know, or even acknowledge to themselves that they were raped by, uh, you know, an older man as a kid. And I love that Drew now understands why Franco is the way he is and maybe a friendship can come out of it and, you know, reform from what they were as kids. I would love I to have to give that. I have to give the writers such amazing props because it was a slow burn and then it, it ignited and it went into an explosion immediately in yep. the best way possible. They did yep. everything right with him and Liz. They did everything right with yep. him and Drew. His emotional breakdown was phenomenal. Roger yes. Howard absolutely yes. needs to be on that list next year. Yes. And, yes. you know, barring barring anybody really coming out of the gate between now and then, he, right now he is the standout for next year. Yes, yes. Without a doubt. Well, between him and, and um, Eric Braden, but I'm Braden. almost wanting to choose um, Roger Howard even over Eric Braden with the storyline. A, the scene with Betsy absolutely. was so underplayed, it was perfect. It mm-hmm. was perfect. I, I forgive you, even though I want to hate you. It was done so well. All we need really yeah. is Heather to break out one more time and kind of come, you know, come back in to, to put a little wrench in all this. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But it's, yeah. Candace. I thought it was a really good story. I mean... Soap Twitter aside, because Soap Twitter was really bashing the story, I thought this was a job well done on General Hospital's part. Like you said, we never hear from the guy's point of view mm-hmm. about this. Um, I, I think General Hospital did it really good. You're right, it was a slow burn, and then all of a sudden it just was like, whoosh, you know. And this is Roger Howard at his best. Best, yeah. Um, yep. Yes. I think, you know, I don't look at it – I'm going to say it like this. I know some people on soap Twitter says this is a redemption of Franco. I don't see it like that. I just see no. another piece to his puzzle. Because yep. all we've known is from the time we met him, played by then James Franco, to now, right. we never knew. We knew bits and pieces of his childhood, but we didn't know everything. And exactly. I feel like so if you're going to have this character develop into – well, he's already, quote-unquote, a leading man of General Hospital. You need to have the whole layer. And I think they did a really good job with it. I think you're right, the whole Drew thing, the only thing missing is Drew's memories. Um, but mm-hmm. I do want to see where this goes and how it will affect mm-hmm. Drew and him because another thing is Drew has to also forgive him for Sam. I think a lot of people right. keep forgetting about, you know, Franco, right. Sam, and Michael. And, you know, even right. though Sam and Michael have forgotten, that's that's still another layer. That's a little, dis- you know, something is like, okay, wait a minute. I can't. Well, please, maybe now try. that they understand, you know, what happened to him and what made right. him the person that he is, maybe more people will forgive him. Will they ever forget? Of course not. But right. you have to forgive to be able to live and move on in your own life. Right. There's a lot of, you know, Jason, Sam, and Drew, and what they're all, they're all stuck. Mm -hmm. Right. And the world, the world is clamoring for the reverse of the me too, for the Mm -hmm. the male point of view. If they do Mm -hmm. take the storyline that they, that they're prepping where he goes, you know, on a quest to, to find the rest of them. That's a really great story to tell. 
Yeah. Um, oh, and yeah. I really hope that they don't that they don't leave that on the back burner. I hope that's the next stage. And the scenes between him and Kevin are also phenomenal. If they take yeah, the two yeah, of them yeah. on that journey with Liz as the sidebar kind of um, backdoor conscience, it's going to be a perfect story. Yeah. And yeah, I really want totally to take easy. one moment and apologize also to our, our listeners. I really, really disrespected the Max Gale portrayal of Mike. And in the last month, I have completely reversed my position. He is phenomenal. He's doing a phenomenal job. And That's I apologize. What I meant, my other thing that I was going to mention, because Max Gale is just, yeah, mm-hmm. Perfect in this role. Perfect in the storyline. Yep. Yep. I can't I say anything bad have... about it. He's got it down pat. When it was first coming on, we discussed it, and I said that, well, the, that GH is just not really doing anything with the story. They're just placing it there. But I, I admit, too, that I reacted too soon, and he has pulled a. He has really pulled the heartstrings. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to cry every time he he cries and the things that have happened to him and and you know the confusion on his face all the time and and Sonny, you know, loving his father even though he still has the memories of what a type of father he was and and forgiving him and moving on and taking care of him and it, it just everything is perfect about the storyline. Absolutely. All right, so last thing I'm going to mention because we're down to 20 minutes and we after we're making Carolyn wait so long, I want you guys to discuss days if anything as far as time is concerned. The last thing, no, last two things I want to mention real quick. One is Dr. Bench kissing Kiki was just gross. Yep. The way he oh, went yeah, yeah. at yep. it. I mean, can you say Predator? The only thing he was missing was a trench coat. It was just, it was And the nasty. mustache, the twirly mustache. Oh, yeah, that too. Oh, God. I don't know where this is going. I love James Paiva to death. I was so happy that he came on to GH. But this character right now, no. No. You didn't, Yuck. You didn't think he was going to be. I mean, for all you guys that's on the phone, didn't, when they had this character interact with Kiki, you guys didn't think they were going to go there with them? Yeah, I knew it. I, I originally thought, and I think so yeah. today, that they were yeah. going to play him with Alexis because they weren't sure what was going on with um right um with, with Julian with right yeah. Um, yeah and when that panned out they didn't know what to do with him and so they took the the you know path most walked unfortunately and turned him into you know Snickety McSnick and Ugh. and. It's a yeah. waste of a powerhouse actor. I, I feel. Oh my God, I can't, I can't with that, and I totally agree. It's a waste. He should have been Jeff Weber. I'm going to still stick to it. Yes. So. yes, 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 yes. That would have made so much more sense. I just, and they could have brought I mean, I, Rebecca Buttock back. They could have brought Elizabeth's mom. Mm-hmm. They could have brought Elizabeth's be? sister. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they could have got. They could have brought Elizabeth's brother out of jail. There we go. Right. <laughs> yeah. Where's Simone at? Where's Simone at? And TJ. Where, where is Simone at? He needs to be outside the quarter main mansion with a boombox in your eyes, Elizabeth. Uh, Olivia, the light, the heat. Olivia, your eyes. <laughs> yeah, I would have had that song in my head. Oh my god. <laughs> I mean, I think I think they're doing a. I'm gonna say it like this because again, because this is a social storyline that's going on right now, you know, in a lot of workplaces, and then again with mm-hmm. the Me Too. I think they're they're playing the beats. I just, you know, it took them a while because I thought this back in like October, November of last year, but I do think you no. know, take a, take, no, take a look. Candace. Yeah. I'm sorry, I'm going to very, very strongly disagree with you. This is in reaction to Days of Our Lives and Days of Our Lives only. They saw how much, um, how much uh, 
just fandom, pandemonium came out of that storyline. And they jumped on every socially relevant storyline they could think of and crammed it in as quickly as possible. And the Alzheimer, even though they borrowed it from The Young and the Restless, is a, it, they are knocking it out of the park. The Dr. Bench storyline was rushed and horrible because they wanted to get a bunch of socially relevant storylines on there and blow Dave out of the water, and it, it's not mm-hmm. happening. Well, the thing is with General Hospital, I mean, General Hospital has one, two, three, four, yeah, four social storylines going on right now in that show. Four. Right. Because and they couldn't stand the fact that they were being sidebarred as the, the socially relevant storyteller. That they civilized true, them out true. of nowhere and knocked them off their mantle. And that Young and the Restless did it so well with Alzheimer's, they couldn't stand it. So they're throwing every socially relevant story at us that they possibly can. And I, I on that, you. I'm a little, I'm a little uh, unhappy. No, I'm a lot I, unhappy actually. So <laughs> yeah. John Russell and General Hospital with the Alzheimer's storyline. They're, they're. First of all, I applaud both of these shows, even though Days of Love did, right. try, you know, I, you know. But I applaud these shows for bringing awareness to Alzheimer's. Right. And yes. they are two different stories. They are two different mm-hmm. stories, and how they these, you know. Um, the all time of you know you know with Dina and with Mike, how different they are regarding this. I right. applaud them for doing it. With G H they you're seeing a character, Sonny Caruso, go through the worst right now. It's not a mob boss. It's his father. Right. He's Absolutely. in a battle with his father. And yeah. not only that, but this is questioning his his health. Because Sonny doesn't know if this is going to happen to him or Michael or, you know, Christina or, or Avery. He he doesn't know. Like, this is what I see. I'm like, oh, my goodness, this is so sad. But regarding Kiki and Dr. Bench, I'm like, okay, oh, okay, so she wants to be a doctor. Oh, hmm, okay. I, I kind of see where this was turning. It's yeah. just, you saw it coming, too. I don't know. I saw it coming, Honestly. yeah. Honestly, if they wanted to throw a socially relevant storyline at us, they should have had him unrequited, not being as creepy as he's being, and then played up the fact that TJ deserves a position and exactly. he got it and made it and, and brought race into the forefront. Because as much as you want to play that they're a racially relevant show, Jordan and Curtis, for all intents and purposes, are white. They're, you know, and they could really, they dropped the ball two years ago and they could have brought picked it back up and tried it again and done a really good storyline that way. The creepiness came out way too quick and way too ugly. You know, they just threw it on our face to to get us talking. And unfortunately we're not talking as far as that storyline is concerned in in a respectful manner. In a good way. It's not done well at all. Well, I have one more question, but I'm going to leave it because there's only 15 minutes left, and I want you guys to talk about Days with Carolyn. So I'm going to let you go. I had a lot of fun being back on, and hopefully next show I'll be up to date on Days, and um, I'll call in again. And we're tuning in next week with you, right? Pardon? We're tuning in next week with you. It's not written in stone yet. Okay. <laughs> they think. I gotta okay. wait until I gotta wait until he confirm confirms it a hundred percent. So, you know, that was a, a tentative date. He said, "I see no problems right now." So I'll touch base with him, you know, in a day or so, maybe by tomorrow, because tomorrow is Friday, and uh, right. see where we're going Thank from you. there. Thank you, All right, Lord. so Sorry. you guys, thanks again. It was a lot of fun, and I'll talk to you um, in Twitterverse and probably in our little chat after them Emmys. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, All right, Carolyn, it is your turn to shine. Tell us what you love <laughs> and love and love about these right now. Oh, well, I want everyone's opinion on uh, Abby, Chad, and Stefan. What are we don't have your an feelings? <laughs> we don't have an hour. Oh, good lord! Okay, I'm I'm gonna I'll take the ball and run with it. Um, okay. so run with it. For a multiple personality storyline, they're knocking it out of the park. It's not my favorite storyline in general for for soap to do, but they're doing a really good job with it. I love 
I love the slow burn, the test, um, the test Fordness of Steph, <laughs> Stefan, and and Gabby. <laughs> I love that Gabby wants to be a real personality, like tested. And um, I can't say a bad thing about it right now, except that it's you know a storyline that probably should not have been done. On top of the greatness that was everything the last couple of months. However, since they're doing it, not bad, not bad at all. Not bad. So you're, so you're. Uh, what is your feeling? Because uh, I've I'm following different um, social media sites, and they're just screaming rape. Stefan and, and Abigail, he's <laughs> raped her now. Most and Chad likely, said that yes. Yesterday. Yep. So uh, see, my feeling is. My feeling is it's going to go very one life to live. They're going to do an integration kind of storyline where there is no Abigail and there is no Gabby. There's a new personality that's both. Um, With Connie on General Hospital, there were two distinct personalities that never merged. This one, I, I, I can almost guarantee that Abigail is going to come out Abigail, but not Abigail that we know, a, a, you know, a, a hybrid of the three personalities. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you think so you think the end result is going to be uh, more positive than it is now. I hope. Uh, I Stephen's sort of getting think... a role. They're just bashing him. Oh, jeez. Uh, Cuz I think you can't You I think you can't go put a you. price on that. No. You can't put a price on him. Abby was not in her right mind. So yeah, that, they know. can argue rape. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but I think I think the personality that emerges is going to do a Steffi bold and beautiful move. No, he did not rape me. I wanted him. And in fact, I think I still want him, even though I still love Chad and that they're not going to be able to, to really take that very far. No, the fans just love Chad and Abby. I mean, they just, they're, they're, they're vile. <laughs> I mean, here's the thing. I agree. I agree with that. I personally, I do think it is rape. I mean, I don't like throwing that word around, but the fact is, she was not in her right state of mind. And not only that, if we're gonna, if if you want to take the rape part, you still have a guy who knows about this woman's illness and has not told her husband. Like I feel as though if this was a classic soap opera triangle and whatnot, that I. I <laughs> I like Marcy. I think the DID storyline is a Ron staple, you know, even though it was, it you know, he did, you know, it, you know, One Life to Live, did it the best. I'm sorry. General Hospital, eh, it was all right. You did but it with it, Connie. It, 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 right. That's what I said. Eh, what's that? Oh, eh. wait. Or were not. You, were you, were you, well, they kind of sort of, sort of, it was a staple, you know, One Life to Live. You know, yeah. One Life to Live did it best, you know. And the thing is, I think it's interesting is everybody threw that about Tess and Jess and Nash and Ford and Antonio and, and whatnot. And the thing is, is that when you you still look at the story, and when that scene happened, when they slept, it was like, wait a minute, this woman wasn't in the right state of mind. Like, if we're going to go legal-wise, this was a right Yeah, but look at, it, look at it the way it came down, though. We didn't know what was going on. She didn't know what was going on. He didn't know what was going on. And that's the way they're going to play it up because he's on contract. He's not going anywhere anytime soon. So they have mm-hmm. to find a way to keep this storyline going and find a way to work. You know, chat, right. nobody can be happy for too long. John and Mal- nobody can ever be, right. you know. Okay. They have to find a way to build back the love between and if they did it with Gabby versus Chad and all that, it would be rehashed. It would be so. This is the freshest way they could think of it. Do you I, think? Well, I don't like. I, I don't like the way. Yeah, you know, they're making Chad like the the victim. You know, like he's her husband. You know, <laughs> where, right. where's he? If, if you like saw, big, if you saw your spouse, yeah, if you saw your spouse in bed with somebody else, yeah, you're gonna be hurt. You're gonna be betrayed. You're gonna be upset. You're gonna automatically think something happened. I think I, this this is me just saying this. I think if they didn't have the DID storyline a part of it, it wouldn't have been such an outrage. You know, it would have been like, oh, they yeah. slept together, da 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 da. It's a typical, you know, triangle of soaps. You threw a mental illness in, which that yeah, but a lot yeah, of they have <laughs> to there, But there, there, yeah, there was when when she was still in her right mind, there was chemistry there, and I don't think they wanted to really address that but you know there's chad she's running around in that ugly yellow dress you know didn't you clue in there 
And also, yeah. I mean, well, how do you top? How do you top the last couple of months as far as the JJ Theo? Yeah, uh, Lonnie, yeah. mm-hmm. how do you top yeah. that? And there, you know, honestly, the only way to top it is to go over the top soap, which is exactly yeah. what Ron is is famous for. Going. And quite frankly, if we're talking as much as we are talking about it, then the storyline's a hit, whether the fans like it or not. It's bringing oh, enough well. chatter that yeah. people are paying attention. Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I, you I want I them agree. talking. And I, and it doesn't matter, good or bad. And hopefully, he will. Uh, <laughs> He, he, the storyline will come, you know, all 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 out good because um, I just doing, hope I before she's integrated, she job. kills Vivian. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I used to love Vivian, but I don't know. The other I get, well, I they're all, they're all in the, they're all locked up and they're into the wine. I think Kate and Vivian and Marlena. <laughs> yeah, if she could kill Vivian and maim Kate and you know maybe you know paralyze Kate for a couple of years and let Marlena free, that you know that might be that might be a really good ending to this story, and have Marlena integrate her, you know, while it's all going on. <laughs> Oh. Okay, Eve, well, Brady, okay. Chloe, Lucas. What are we feeling here? Oh, my goodness. Oh, did you see it today? Oh, poor Brady. Yes, he I just did. cannot get a break. Oh, my God, poor Brady. <laughs> but he got I a drink. Today. Just give me a 50-second yeah. recap of what happened. Well, uh, you know he, he that guy that the, well, after Chloe. Miguel. So, yeah, Miguel. Yeah. yeah. Wanted to spike Lucas's drink and... And, what? and Brady drank it. Oh, Brady no. got the drink oh, instead of Lucas. Yeah. And then Sierra told uh, Brady and Eve about Claire um, cheating. And the cheating. So and there and so Eve doesn't <laughs> she doesn't want to have anything to, with Brady again. And poor Brady's he's pleading with her no and she says, Oh, and now you're drunk She said, Oh, and you're drinking again and he's saying, No, I'm not I'm not I'm not drinking <laughs> the end of the show, he collapsed. So. Well, Jen's first good appearance is the last May week. 3rd. May, May 3rd. 3rd. Yeah. May, May, May 3rd. Yeah, just around the corner. Yeah. Next yep. week, buddy. Nice. Let's, let's go. Yeah, and, and yeah, nice. Maggie heard uh, Victor talking, uh, so she she's on to Victor and, oh, and Teresa, so... It's it's uh, the ship's gonna hit the fan next week. I'm so like, I'm can't wait. It's gonna May be a celebration. Sweep, May sweep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's not today. Okay, we gotta wrap up. All right, real quick, one question. Okay. Where is Adrian? What happened to her? She's uh, still around. She she went to Bay City. Mhm. Yeah. <laughs> went to Bay City. Yeah, I thought she might have died and someone stuffed her in the closet. I wasn't sure. Okay. No, no, who she didn't. Miguel, She's who was Miguel? Working on the who, who's, Miguel mm, who's Miguel working for? Probably the. Um, I would say the guy that for who has Teresa. Teresa. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. And okay. somehow or another, oh. Vivian and Stefan are going to be part of that storyline. Mark my word. Oh, oh they are. And, okay. Mark Wait, my word. And the. Vi- and big story. The big story is um, Robert Scott is back full time. Contract. Oh, yeah, Crazy so Psycho yeah. Ben is back oh, with no, they Dave. Hate they, they hate <laughs> yes. him, but I say that means he's a good yes. actor. Oh no, they're not. They're not kind to Ben. Oh God again. <laughs> oh, yeah, just give him a tumor back. and forgive contract. him. He's give him contract. Franco's tumor and forgive him. <laughs> he's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, we got to go to B and B and wrap it. Triangle, triangle, okay. triangle. Who shot Bill? Who cares? Uh, <laughs> oh, back. Who cares? Rich is an ass. Who cares? Who cares? There is absolutely nothing interesting going on Who on cares? TV right now at all. <laughs> uh, Wait a minute. No. Taylor Hayes is back. I care. That was big. That was huge. The return was of big. Taylor. No, I've... it was not. It was so dumb. So no, dumb. Because nobody thought about nobody <laughs> thought that was Taylor that shot Bill. Except for if you follow me on Twitter, I, I said did. it says November. We both said I it. I did. I did. The minute, they, the minute they said that Hunter Tyler was coming back, I said, oh, she shot Bill. Oh, I said this back <laughs> in, like, November before, I didn't even before know. Hunter even came back. Yeah, it was, it was, it was sort of, if you, like, okay, I, I'm going to say this. I've been saying this for the longest time that Taylor needed to come back on. It wasn't until, like, around February, March, she came back to social media. 
that's when all the pieces came together. It was like, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. and bold and beautiful, bold and beautiful. Let's, I mean, give them credit. They know how to keep their mouth yeah. shut. So yeah, but they had, you know, they had to wait. They had to wait for all her uh, surgery and Botox and everything to tone down because she was looking well, pretty bad there a couple of years ago. Yeah, oh, and, yeah. She's, and she's been having a tough time oh, with well. you know her life, her relationships, and stuff like that. So. You know that well, played yeah. a huge part as well, but is she did. You know, did you guys, did you guys she, hear did the rumor? Garrett, hmm? what, what, what was that? They're separated. Oh, okay. they're separated. Mm. Did you guys hear the rumor mm. that when he reemerges, it's it's going to be that she's roommates with Sheila? Oh God. <laughs> No, I didn't That's hear a that. Big rumor right now. I'm wait. No, I'm <laughs> seriously waiting for the scene for Sheila, Taylor, Brooke, and Eric. I'm so waiting for a re- I'm so waiting for a scene with Don Four. Yeah, yeah. I need and I Quinn. need that in my we life. We have to have Quinn in there. No, we don't need Quinn. We don't. We need these four. We need these four. <laughs> and we need Liam <laughs> to come in at the right moment. I love you, Scott. And we oh, need the Stephanie I'm portrait. Not, I might start <laughs> I might we need the Stephanie portrait to be hanging, and we need her talking to Brooke behind the behind the scenes. Brooke, yeah, Brooke, that would look be at good. her face. Look at her face, Brooke. <laughs> hey guys, they've got they've got my, they've got my attention. I might I might start watching that one. <laughs> guys, this All right, has David, been really wrap up, a don't fun you? night. I have to wrap up. And I'll, yeah, I'll, be hashtags. I'll be putting the hashtag. I'll be putting the hashtag on there. <laughs> okay. Okay, Second. guys, it's been a trip. It's been a trip. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around, Carolyn. You are a trooper, no, my a... woman. <laughs> Carolyn is a trooper. <laughs> <laughs> well, Good night, I, everyone. I, I, I got dropped. My Good phone, night, everyone. Uh, See you. Horizon, yeah, for us. Next time. Look for my emails. Happy, Happy hey, Emmy. Hi, guys. Good night, everybody. Have a great weekend. Great weekend. You too.